Okay, hi everyone, welcome to Skyrim, me here, we did Cyborg, with me to do, do Keithis of course, uh, my main lizardman, and we're here in Castlefire camp, uh, just having taken out the force one here. Uh, just a little uh, note, I'm not actually recording this during the recording of this episode, I did actually record some commentary during this episode, as I normally do, unfortunately after... All the cleaning up and everything, uh, Audacity decided to lose the actual footage, so yeah. What you're listening to is a post-recording. I just take out my Warhammer here, obviously I need to be armed. And uh, while I'm doing this post-commentary, uh, one little note, I'm gonna start asking you at the beginning. Just a reminder, I'm a small YouTuber, and if you like what I do, give me a subscribe maybe, or at least tell somebody about it. But of course, only do this if you think that my stuff's good enough. But of course, if you subscribe and everything, it'll inspire me to keep getting better. So the choice is up to you. But yeah, uh, so we're in this episode and I'm going to be trying to head north because I've been in the Reach for a very long time and unstated mostly in the last few episodes, but I really have been trying to get out of the Reach and go somewhere else. Uh, just make sure to keep this was behind me and so because I can't go up via uh, the actual north way which kind of leads me up into the Hagravens uh, part of the class fire camp I decided to go via the river and not take the iron ore because frankly I've got a lot of it and I still haven't actually built a house of my own yet and of course potion ingredients distraction can have got the better of me Got myself a few dart wings and continue to make my way down the river. Attack my mud crab and just give him a nice smack for my warhammer there. Right, and so I decided to see if maybe there was a way up near Red Eagle Readout because obviously the readout is kind of on the way, so. Well, by on the way, I mean it's actually in the right flipping direction. So, yeah, we're gonna go up via the readout and see if maybe there was another little direction. I was just checking I was actually going the right way. Okay, so I got up to the readout and there is indeed uh, another way. Or rather there is, uh, well there's, there's bits of mountain and hill I can continue to climb up. So I decided to uh, continue going up this way. We're gonna uh, get to the top of the hill. See what lies over it and what way we're going to be going next. See if we can find ourselves a road and Oh And then some wolves came out of nowhere and I really should have expected that. They surprised me during the game as well, and they surprised me during this post recording commentary. And obviously, once again, I decided to go and grab myself some potion ingredients, because I just can't help myself. So I'll start making my way down now, um, go with a bit more juniper along the way, and so yeah, just kind of make my way across the hill, continue going this way and see what I find, because, well, the hill is walkable at the moment, but I know that sooner or later I'm going to reach a point where I'm going to have to start uh, going down again and probably rejoin the river. And I've already had to do that because the cliff sides are far too sheer. So I'm going back down, uh, find the river. And I know that uh, Cloth Waston is just over there. And I know that I actually have a, a quest. I've got a sword that I need to kind of give in. But I decided that I was just not in the mood to do so. Get myself another dragonfly there. Because I've always got to grab some dragonflies. Uh, you're an absolute pain in the neck, and most of the time I completely and totally miss them. I was rather good at grabbing them today. More mud crabs. And so I think I've got one, and another one came up behind me there. I didn't really hear him coming. The pain in the neck, mud crabs. Didn't really see too many of them during uh, my first. Uh, few episodes of this, but then I guess I wasn't really hoarding too many rivers at that point. I was kind of hanging around White Run. Also Riften, I really need to go back to Riften at some point. 
So now I'm going up because I see a bridge there and therefore there's a road, which means that, well hey, if there's a road then <laughs> there's a pathway. And I'd also seen some heads on the bridge, so I want to see what's going on. And I find uh, Thalmor leading a prisoner. And now at this point, I'm uh, thinking, so I quickly really quick save and I try to activate my, uh, my beast form. Only to discover that uh, I can't because I didn't, because I used it less than a day ago. So I was rather annoyed about that. So I decide to leave them be, you know, run past them. Walk away now. Ignore uh, them being hostile to me. And then we find the broken tower readout. Hey, and uh, the force one attacked. So I shout to fire at them. And uh, the Thalmor join in. And the, and the Thalmor prisoner is actually fighting with the Thalmor, which is a little bit strange. So I kind of stood out here unsure what to actually do. Should I join in the fight? Uh, should I just run on? And they're, they're fighting the people on top, so I decided to take this chance. Uh, they're actually doing a little bit of eliminating of the outside people for me, so I decided to go and storm the readout. Because, you know, more force one, and I get very uh, distracted. As do many Skyrim players. The far more of all left, so it's just me and Dakethus now. So we continue further on into the readout and towards the first room and the first to Thalmor. Here comes the forager, I'm waiting for him to go. I and shout fire at them. And one down. And now basically all these guys are foragers. So I had the slight issue after this of uh, trying to separate them so I could loot them all properly and also accidentally nicking one sword that I don't really need so yeah I'm, I'm trying to separate them here man then ow I just kind of decide that this guy here with the arrows is just annoying me too much so I ran up to him and gave him a critical hit and that was that Got a nice amount of arrows from him though. Right, and since there's no more enemies, I decide to uh, sort out these foragers properly and do that by looking at one and then kind of dragging them and separating them out so I know that I've looted them already. That's one, that's two. Start dragging him out, or her, I'm not entirely sure. And just check the third guy, and yep, okay, so I've deleted everything. Take that one random iron arrow there, and continue to go around and loot everything else in the vicinity. Take an ancient Nord arrow, which I think the Keith is fired off, because I think he's holding a whole bunch of arrows right now. We well, don't really have much need to do. And then I start bemoaning the fact that uh, everything's so dark. And I wonder if I should use my cat eye power. And then I remember that Dakethis actually had a torch. So I put my weapon away, hoped that he would bring out his torch. Uh, but he didn't. And I got a little bit confused. So I decided to see if maybe taking it from him and giving it back would be good. And then I looked and realised that at some point I must have taken his flipping torch off him. Because he doesn't have it anymore. Which is something I'm going to try and fix between episodes. And then I decided that, you know, since I was already uh, talking to him about items, I decided to just move a bunch of stuff onto him uh, so that I didn't have to do it later on. So I just start uh, loading him full of my random tat and continue to flail around uselessly in the dark. I uh, found myself some barrels and everything, and potions. So yeah, my usual looting rules apply here. I'm going to go along and steal anything that's valuable and steal all the food, because that's what I do. 
nothing up those stairs because they're collapsed. So I start checking out everything else. Nothing around there. And then I turned and I found a door, which was an adept lock. And those of you who watch a lot know that I have to with the adept locks. And this one was no different. And here we go, I actually managed to get it undone. The good thing is, at least with every broken lockpick, I'm gaining more lockpicking experience. So I got in here, started flailing around in the dark again, looking for valuable stuff, and found that there was quite a lot of food in here. So I started to go around and harvest all the rabbits and the pheasants I could. Oh, and of course, taking everything from the chests and the barrels as well, because as I said, I take all the food, because, I mean, it's not as they're going to need it anymore. I'm taking it all because I've killed them all so they can't eat it all. So I might as well take it so it's not going to go to waste. Realistic wiggle physics there. Of dead bunnies. Which is kind of horrific in a way, isn't it? Right. And so with that, I decide to carry on. And, uh... So start checking up here. And find a hat. Find an entire cabbage on a plate. Which makes you wonder about various things. And then I decide to start exploring this passageway first. Because I think there's going to be... I thought there was another passageway over that way. So we start having a look. And that barrel is empty. And I notice that there is a trap here, so I try to avoid it. While stealing all the stuff that's valuable off the table. The key this, of course, was not so lucky. That looked like it hurt. Those door traps are horrific, man. Right, I miss out on the other one. So I continue onwards and it was kind of at this point that I realised I was probably advancing too much and I should probably go back and check the other passage that I missed before. So I jump over like barrels and tables to avoid the traps because this was not so lucky. My poor poor follower, he, he puts up with a lot, does my dear lizardman. And I'm very glad that he forgives me for it all. As I go over here and realise there wasn't another passage, However, there was a bit more to the side that I'd missed before, and I did at least find another barrel with a few more apples in it. Which I suppose is something. The key this will probably not forgive me for a little while, but, but he does at the very least continue to follow me, so that's good. I'll just quick save it there to make sure that I don't lose any progress. Because losing the stuff is a pain in the neck. I continue to jump over barrels and stuff. Oh, and Akith has got his revenge there. Managed to hit me with the door. So I get down and start exploring this part of the castle now. And we start exploring the circular outer part of it first. Checking all the barrels and stuff for food and potion ingredients and other such lootable things. Even the empty ones. Because I just automatically check barrels before I go out, before I go and uh, do anything else. I just check the door and realise it was the Skyrim. And this one is actually still inside, so I decided to go through this one first. And then found myself up on a balcony above the place where we kind of well, the first room we entered. That sack is empty. So that's a potion. And we continue down here. Keeping an eye out, of course, always for danger. And there's another door to Skyrim. And it's at this point that I turn around and think, yeah, okay, um... Let's go and search out the middle part of that room that we missed before because there's going to be more loot there and I'm not going to miss a thing because it's the same thing that I do in Grand UT. I've got to explore every path and pick up every bit of loot I can find. That's why I find myself in a bedroom, which is great because there's always all kinds of good stuff in a bedroom. 
including a lot of bread this time. So that was only a novice lot, it's much easier to get into. We'll get in there, I uh, check out what's there, and then I just take it all. I don't want to take anything I don't want. Search out the wardrobe, nothing interesting in there. I told you there was a lot of bread. Uh, just check the buckets, make sure there's nothing in there. More food from the sacks, nothing in the sorting box. Take this school book, which uh, didn't advance me up to the next level. I thought it was going to, which is a little bit sad. Yeah, I just continue to take things uh, from all around. Because you know, as I said earlier, they're not going to use it anymore. Got myself some nice gold. And one last cupboard. Yep, okay. So that's pretty much everything that uh, I need to do there. So I decide to go into one of the outer parts of the readout and find myself on top of the first level and the Thalmor have already really done the, uh, the job for me there. Although actually she's got a steel arrow in her so maybe the Keith has did the job. But either way, somebody else took her out. I wanted that arrow there but I couldn't take it no matter what I did, what angle I came at it from. But yeah, somebody else did the job so I didn't have to kill that particular force one. So I have a quick little dash over here just to make sure that I hadn't missed anything else worth taking. I found myself a cooking pot, which I'm going to uh, make use of in a minute. Just checking whether there weren't any arrows or anything else useful over here, it's just all this iron stuff. Found myself a sack full of sacks of flour. And now I go and make use of the cooking pot, because, you know, I've got the means to do so. Oh no. Yeah, I couldn't make you do the cooking pot because I was in combat because there's more force worn up there. But yeah, so I go back inside, uh, continue to explore the inner part of the readout. And uh, hopefully make my way upstairs to finish off the other bits of force worn up there because they were interrupting my cooking time. And I wasn't very happy about it. Although, mind you, my desire to eliminate all the force on here is mostly because, hey, you know, I started a job, might as well finish it. Yeah, I, okay, this was grinning at me, so I kind of took notice of it. At this point I got uh, over encumbered, so quick little check round. And Akethis, I need you. But first of all, we're just going to check I don't have any stuff that uh, I can't just drop. I thought I'd pick something up that I didn't need. And I was right. The gauntlets, didn't need those. Now I'm, uh, now I'm uh, under my encumberment limit again. But I just continue to check around. Find myself a gourd, find more gold. And garlic, of course, for uh, more potion stuff. Oh, and I'm encumbered again. So, before I do to anything Oblivion else, the this, I have need of you, friends. You need to carry something? Yes, indeed. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of stuff for you to carry for me. And then we're going to continue upstairs. There'll still be more horse one up there. And so now we are climbing up the stairs, heading off to take on some more force worn. And they've noticed me. So I'll wait for them to approach me here. And uh hear rocks coming towards me, so I kind of duck to the side behind the barrel. And I had actually expected to just one of my swings to take care of that fourth one. And um, yeah, we got a sneak level up and that gave me a proper level up. So I decide to uh, go do the level up. I level up health and then um, a previous playthrough which I lost, I did actually manage to get a level up and I got the Tower of Strength perk so I immediately just go for it again here. Which uh, reduced my stagger. So after this I go around to see if this Force Worn has anything worth taking and they do, got some arrows. And more Force Worn here. 
So I shout fire at them, completely miss. So I move forward to engage and take care of them pretty damn quickly. And they have just made grapes, something I still need to complete a quest. So I'll take those uh, willingly and with much joy. Oh, and this person here took me by surprise because I wasn't expecting them. Not that they really caused me much trouble. You have no idea how satisfying that is. And of course, human heart there, I did kind of go ick a bit uh, during my proper actual recording, which I have since lost. Just quick saving it here yet again because I want to make sure that... Well, I don't have to repeat any of this if uh, I manage to die. We have had another bedroom here, so I just sort of examine it, start taking all the stuff I need. More jasper grapes there, obviously. And I'm going to... Eventually I am going to finish that quest, among many of the other fetch quests that I picked up ages ago. So I just continue searching around now, uh, make sure there's nothing in that bucket. Check the cupboard, there's nothing there that I want to take. Uh, search a chest, because there's usually good stuff in the chest. And I examined it and decided I'll take everything except for the Iron Greatsword. Because, quite frankly, I don't really need an Iron Greatsword. It's heavy and it's not really worth the gold for me to pick it up and carry it. I've grabbed far too many great swords already in this playthrough. Quick saving it again and uh, continuing onwards through more stairs. And at this point I start talking about the end boss, which is going to be Briarheart, because this is Forsworn and the end boss of a load of Forsworn encamped like this is usually a Briarheart. Sometimes there's a hag raven, but I don't think there is one here. Well, I didn't think there was one here, and there isn't. There isn't a hag raven here. Spoiler alert. So I go back out, um, Skyrim again. We're much higher up on the castle now. And, uh, the there's a force one here. With arrows. And, uh, she died from fire before I could even hurt her. But we still got the animation. So I still got to look kind of epic, even though I completely missed her. I'll take the arrows there, because obviously, you know, arrows are good. You can always use arrows. They don't really weigh anything, so I might as well take them. And uh, at this point, I'm just sort of looking around, quick saving it again, and I decided to go and check behind the towers, because sometimes you'll find, like, hidden chests or things. And there's nothing behind this tower here. There's no way to get up to the top of that tower either. So I decide to go and have a look around the side of the other one before I go through that door and continue onwards. And there was nothing behind this one either. But you know, at least I checked. At least I checked. Because I was slipping down the mountain there so I got back round nice and quick. And uh, headed for the door. Make sure I was crouched first, because I wanted to be sneaky. And we come in here, and here is that Briarheart. And he's the only guy here, so... I sort of snuck for a minute and then realised he couldn't see me. So this was a chance for me to uh, do a little bit of arrow play, which is something I don't usually get to do, because I'm not very good with it. So he stopped, and uh, nabbed him in the back. Use the commands and uh, I'm going to hammer her back out. Started off with some fire, make him stagger. Realised he'd actually kind of hurt me rather badly, so I start stuffing my mouth full of food, which is what I usually do. And so I make the quest, and he's just firing a bunch of ice at me, and he hurts rather hard. Like, this, this is. I've fought other Briar Hearts before, and I've usually taken care of them pretty damn fast, but this guy was tough. So I put poison onto my Warhammer and get myself healed up. A little bit confused as to why I've got so few healing potions. So I sort of scroll down and look for the ones that I've actually made myself. And uh, swallowed a few of them. And rejoined the fight. Once again, he really is uh, having a go at me, so I decided to suck myself all the raw food this time. Right, and with that all done, I decide to uh, get around the corner 
and uh, regroup for minutes because this is uh, tanking for me here admirably. I realise I forgot to uh, re-poison my Warhammer so I go and decide to use one of my Ravage Stamina poisons which has uh, a few extra effects on it. So I come out and he's here and once again I'm very glad that I got to kill him after he said that. As if I hadn't heard that one several times before, Mr. Briarheart. You silly person. So I go through his stuff and take everything that I feel was worth taking. And uh, with that all done, I wait for my shout to recharge. And then... I disarm the trap and send things flying about the room. That was fun. So now I begin to actually search the room and look for the stuff that I can loot because you know I won the battle so to the victor goes the spoils because that's that's kind of how the uh, the old saying goes isn't it? I go ugh at the skeever body there I just realised what it was. I go ick again at the fact that she was spine there and uh, I then surmise that he was probably doing a ritual which I interrupted and he was going to be very displeased with me. And then I got distracted by snowberries on the floor. I must have gone flying when I uh, triggered that trap in the middle. More jazzberry grapes. This place was great for jazzberry grapes. I mean, I got three of them, and I mean, I'm looking for 20, but you know. Three jazzberry grapes when apparently they're so rare. That's good, man. That's good. When I have a garden, I'm actually going to plant some to make that quest a bit easier. I noticed a cell there. I uh, quick saved it before I could try and pick the lock and then realised I actually had the key so I didn't really need to quick save it. There was nothing in there so I come out and uh, start scouring everything, realise I've looked through there. And then we come to the bedroom bit which is where most of the loot is. And then I found Hjolti's sword and surmised that this place was obviously part of a quest line and I've completely, I completely missed getting the quest. So we'll take the sword and uh, whenever we find that quest line, we'll go finish it. In a weird way, weird order. Take the beef stew, take the potato. Since I couldn't take the, uh, the potato, I just sort of grabbed the bowl. And yeah, the potato went flying. I had to move around the chair to actually grab it. And with that, I then went to search the cupboard and everything that was on the shelves above it. You know, all the food and all the potions and everything. Still good. And then I saw a sack, but I couldn't actually get to it from here. So I tried jumping to uh, get a hold of it. And that didn't quite work. So it wasn't very good with my timing. So I thought and knew, like, hang on a minute, if I stand on this table I'll be able to reach it. And I did. Take the cabbages, uh, take the cheese, take the tomatoes in the sack, and uh, that's that. I admired Akethis again in his outfit, because he is a very good looking lizardman, especially in the way I've dressed him. He's a very loyal follower to me, is Akethis. I'm very glad that uh, he sticks with me after, through all the things I put him through. And with that I surmise that uh, we're done here, so I leave, and then I decide I'm not going to run all the way through the readout again, so uh, I decided to descend in a Skyrim fashion, but not quite as recklessly. So I'm actually looking for ways to uh, descend in little bits and pieces so I don't accidentally uh, bash my head open by jumping too far because that happens sometimes and with that done I'm free to proceed now goodbye broken tower readout you were fun and uh, the Thalmor have gone thank god I was very happy about that quick saved it again uh, check what direction I'd been and then I got rather confused because I was like, wait, where, where did I come from? And then I realised I'd gone a very long way in the space of uh, not very long. 
And I was impressed with myself. Dakethis obviously decided to actually go through the readout because he's sensible. And I was like, okay, let's proceed down this path here, going northwards, heading ever further out of the reach, uh, because that is the goal. I check the sign to make sure I know what I'm going. I'm going. To be honest, I don't really go want to go to any of those places. Get my warhammer out. Take the lavender. And then I'm up here, and I decide that I want to go down there. And can't really see anything interesting down there. But hey, you know, I decided that I wanted to uh, probably up a mountain, and I wanted to be down there where all the water and pretty stuff is. So I decided to do a bit more Skyrim Mountain Climbing Descending Edition. Once again, trying to be as sensible as possible and not uh, make any long drops. And it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Because this mountain apparently had a bit of land that was climbable. So one of the fox there said hi to it. And then I found a book cart with books everywhere. So I decided, well, hey, you know, I'm not going to let all this literature just lie here. And the cart started moving there, and I kind of got a little bit concerned because I thought something was under it. But apparently not. But yeah, I'm not just going to leave all this literature here. So I picked it all up. And then uh, I had a quick look around uh, to see if I could see any signs of what actually happened to this book merchant. But I didn't see a damn thing. Nice view though. Very nice view. And so I uh, move off down this little pathway here. Quick save it again. And look out over the bit of land that uh, I'm now heading towards. Pick up some more lavender for potions. And I just admire the view because Skyrim can be very pretty. I mean, I, yes, I know the graphics are dated, but it's still a very pretty game. I just check my location on the map again. And realise that I'm in a big open area here with nothing found, so I'm about to go and have some nice adventures. Maybe head to Morthal, but I'd rather head up to Solitude if I'm honest. Should rather heading northwards. But it's at this point that I think, uh, hmm. Well, I've probably been filming long enough. So I reset my camera and did my outro to camera. So I'll do this now. Thank you very much for watching, uh, don't worry, I will do a non-post commentary next time for you all. Uh, but as always, I'm the Dated Cyborg, like, subscribe, give me all that good stuff if you think I deserve it. And once again, all that's left for me to say is thank you and good day.